But now we've covered notation and text and a number of other things. Uh, let's just have a look at lines and symbols as well, because um, like text, they will have a direct effect on the playback engine and be interpreted in the same way when they're picked up in the score if they've got playback properties associated with them. Uh, for example, glissandos and trills uh, will certainly play back. If I just play through these examples here, all right, so there's some simple uh, silly little examples just to give the impression of what they do. But when I bring up the home tab and inspector once again and just pin that. You can see when I have a glissando line uh, selected it gives me this little option here in the inspector and I can change various properties uh, of the glissando itself. So I might want to change it to chromatic from continuous for instance. All right and depending on the uh, the note value and uh, speed etc that you've got the, uh, the line set to then the the playback property might be different but then the trill line as well uh, likewise has some options here we can change the speed of the trill so at the moment at the moment it's doing this kind of thing so we could turn that right up to something crazy fixed. There we go, so it's playing a lot faster now. Um, when we change it to fixed it then gives us the capacity to change things like the number of semitone steps uh, that it's trilling on as well as opposed to uh, just doing its default for the, the instrument in question. Okay, that was a pretty interesting one. I don't know many flute players who might actually be able to pull that one off, but uh, you get the idea. So these things uh, are once again from your appropriate menu. So in the text tab it was the styles or uh, chords or lyrics area. And for lines they're going to be in the notations tab under the lines drop down menu, which of course has an easy shortcut L for lines. And we talked a little bit about hairpins and putting dynamics on either side of those. Um, when I play through this one, you'll hear the, the direct result of that. Okay, and slurs as well, and octave above and below will be interpreted directly. Uh, slurs won't, but in the solo violin, but there are some legato uh, examples that will be triggered by them in the string ensemble in the Sibelius 7 Sounds Library. And just for a couple of silly examples that demonstrate mordants and turns, since Sibelius 7.5 we've had the capacity for uh, mordants and turns uh, to play back uh, just by the symbol being inserted in the score. It used to be the case that you'd have to go to the play tab and plugins and then use the ornament uh, playback plugin that would detect any of these in the score and put hidden MIDI messages uh, in there to make them play back. But now it's just as simple as adding them somewhere hopefully more appropriate than where I've added them here. All right, so the pedal line of course as well is giving us a nice sustain in the piano. And for a couple of similar options in the guitar, uh, let ring will give us the same effect as the pedal line. And the harmonic effect with the acoustic guitar is going to give us some nice uh, natural harmonics as well. Um, this one won't have an effect on the acoustic guitar, but will for uh, electric guitar staves. So you can hear the uh, the first and second ending lines uh, where you could see that progressing through and it jumps the first ending line the second time around because we're inside a, a repeat structure. So all of those are interpreted as you would expect by the playback engine as well. <laughs> 